quoted by Mr. Yogendar. Yeah. Uh, he says, in my case, while adding the fertigation solutions in tank from bottle A and bottle B, mm -hmm. EC is showing less. But once I'm adding pH down, then EC increases. Why is this happening? Okay. So, uh, see, ultimately, if we talk about this... Uh, fertilizer tank or recirculating tank whatever we are adding to it is a, a kind of salt okay uh, the moment you are adding a solution a and solution b in your tank then definitely it is going to be a something like adding to your salt and it is going to increase the ec but your question of the moment you are adding a pH booster or a pH adjusting uh, chemical, uh, suddenly your EC goes up. Okay. So uh, maybe you have to see the water you are using in that there is a, some salt which is reacting with your uh, uh, this EC uh, booster or EC adjusting uh, chemical. And because of that, the uh, salt content in your reservoir or in the circulating tank is going up so that's the one probability so i don't know if you can tell me that okay uh, what water you are using most probably if you are using this tap water or a ground water without doing uh, ro filtration then the possibility of this happening this is very high so uh, i think you, you i think you can that is not here yeah, Yogender is not here. I don't know. Means we are four or five guys only. Yeah. Maybe you can put on the group that uh, we started the session. Okay, I'm putting on. Uh... Yeah. But basically, that is a probable reason. Otherwise, there is no reason uh, at the moment you are adding your uh, pH booster or pH adjusting chemical and your EC is going shooting up. It's only possible if you just some somehow. Uh, your reaction is happening with your uh, existing salt. So you have to see that what you are adding in your fertilizer solution. And uh, based on that only, uh, we can just tell that wh what, what is the probable reason. However, okay. only thing is, if it is increasing the EC, you have to observe how it is impacting your crop. Sometimes what is happening if, if these are the same uh, kind of uh, uh, situation and the salt is not harming anything because you are not adding any further salt of your uh, essential nutrients. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yes, there is a possibility when your EC is increasing and it is going beyond your control, then there is a risk of, uh, of some damage. However, we have to have a little more detail uh, about what the water you are using and everything then we can means comment further that what may be the probable reason yeah details cannot be provided right now as yuginder has not joined in yet yeah no issue whenever he will join we can just ask but basically these are the two three probabilities why this uh, uh, by adding this uh, ph boosting solution this ec is going up okay yeah yeah the okay. next question for the next question yeah <clears throat> okay the next question was actually um, i would apologize uh, apologize to all the members that actually i don't have the names of all the members and the name which is coming in the telegram group i i am quoting the question with that name only so mm -hmm. if i'm mistaking uh, if i'm quoting some name some name wrong please do excuse me and the next question is the name was coming in mr bean okay uh, he says, if my irrigation, irrigation water EC is 2.3, source of water is bore, borehole, yeah. and the nutrient target EC is 3.0, will my solution, final nutrient solution be still calculating as 2.3 plus 3.0 is equal to 5.3? Yeah, that is the case. That is the case. That's how whenever you are using very high EC water, then that is not good for your uh, hydroponic cultivation. So basically this should happen means maybe it's a 10, 5, 10% here and there. So uh, basically if it is your uh, water EC is 3 and uh, your uh, fertilizer uh, targeted EC is somehow 2.3. So it is going to be a somewhere between 5, 5.2, 5.3. 
I I think that he has mentioned somehow the TDS. No, he has mentioned the EC of source water. Yeah, it is two point three. Yeah. Okay, and he is targeting three. Yes. Yeah. So, but see, ultimately, for him, two point three is the target. and now he need to bring down the ec of bore well water okay so you okay. cannot in you go beyond including the tap water ec so suppose your tap water ec is 2.3 and you want to just further add 3 then your your uh, salt solution is going to be 5 ec which is detrimental for the crop health so if that is the case i will suggest if you are doing a hobby hydroponics so maybe you can add mix the ro water okay to dilute the ec of bore well water or maybe uh, something tap water whatever is that and if it is a commercial project so very simple option you have to go for a ro water treatment and once you do the ro water treatment you are discarding and removing all the salt in it so that's how it is going to work and then you have to only feed your crop with the targeted ec so second one more a uh, question i am not able to uh, understand what is the crop because 2.3 ec is pretty high so the basic principle while designing your recipe and finalizing your ec should be start with the very low ec okay and gradually increase till the stage the crop is responding and the moment crop respond stops you have to just freeze that is your optimal ec because if you will just uh, uh, supply ec with 2.3 means you need to add more fertilizer adding more fertilizer is your cost so because of that we need to ensure the most optimal ec for your crop and project and that can be achieved while you start say for example because uh, for any commercial project you need to go for uh, pilot uh, testing and while doing the pilot testing you have to design your crop production protocol means crop production protocol if i'm uh, telling so all those things what crop what variety when to plant what uh, what time you transplant that how much water what fertilizer combination how what temperature we need to maintain when to irrigate so all these things comes under a crop production protocol so while designing that crop production protocol you need to start with lower side of your targeted ec suppose you are targeting 2.3 so i'll suggest to start from 1.5 and if at 1.5 also your crop is performing well or a good responding good and after increasing 1.5 to 1.6 it is not responding then maybe you can go further down you start from 1 okay so in this process ultimately you will freeze or achieve the most optimal electrical conductivity for your crop on your project so that's the way we need to uh, uh, design the means freeze our targeted ec of your crop definitely you have to see the secondary platform from there you are going to get all these information consider that as an a benchmark and start from the lower side and then uh, reach to that most optimal and that most optimal is going to be uh, different for each and every uh, project it is not going to be a something like a same for project a and project b it may and it may not so that's how we need to develop the crop production protocol for your own project okay so in uh, uh, i don't know the uh, real name the uh, the uh, name on a telegram mr bean i was just also looking that and mr bean was there so for mr bean the solution is if your uh, ec of uh, groundwater is so much high 
means something 2.3 or 3. So then you have to go for uh, following this RO water treatment, bring down. And whenever you are just doing your uh, fertilizer recipe or supplying your fertilizer, then target the, uh, I mean, most optimal EC for your crop. So in this case, the 3 and 2.3 is a 5. Yeah, absolutely, you are right. And that is not going to help you for producing the crop. Yeah, Anuj. One more input I would like to add, if you allow me. Yeah. Like if I'm using bore, bore well water of 2.3 EC, na, that is of no use to me because I do not know the nutrient composition of that water. Na. That That's will be useful. Absolutely. Na. That absolutely right. The uh, second option for if, if you are something like doing a commercial, then second option is get the analysis done of that particular water okay and that need to be a I means continuous process and try to understand that what are the salts available what are the nutrients available in in your groundwater and maybe you can adjust that with your uh, fertilizer recipe suppose if nitrate is already present there in your borewell water and you get the analysis done and you understood that, okay, this much of a nitrate ions are there or a nit nitrate nitrogen is there and this much of a harmonical nitrogen is there and this one, this much of the calcium is there. So that you can reduce from your fertilizer recipe. So that's the another option by which you can utilize the groundwater. But it is a little tedious and tricky because you have this groundwater composition is never going to be same. Okay, so maybe uh, means every quarter you have to go for analyzing your uh, groundwater for all the nutrient salt plus whatever is uh, maybe harmful salts also present there. Maybe I don't know heavy metals are there, maybe whatever is there. So for all those analysis you need to do. So that is the second option. First option is, yeah, you can go for uh, doing this uh, uh, RO, RO installation and uh, treat your groundwater with RO. Okay. Should I go for the uh, next? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the third question comes from Mr. Hasroop Singh Sethi. Yeah. He, he he quotes, after deciding on the NPK for a fruiting crop vis-a-vis -a, -vis a leafy crop, what are the deciding factors to specify the PPM of the macro and micronutrients in the system? Mm -hmm. He has quoted an example. Say the PPM for calcium and magnesium and copper, iron, boron, etc. for a leafy crop lettuce as compared to a fruiting crop, tomato as an example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Mr. Sethi is doing something good uh, work in Jamsedpur. So uh, he's also something like uh, extending his knowledge to other guys. Uh, for this question, what is the criteria or a basis for deciding what should be my PPM or what should be my nutrient combination? Because I'm just going to take it as a nutrient combination. Okay, so for that, uh, every crop is having their own nutritional requirement. Okay, so that nutritional requirement is already being established in soil or a traditional farming. And that you can get easily on, on just looking for a, on, on secondary platform or some literature or some books. You will get that basically this crop required this is this nutrient. So uh, that that uh, standard need to use as a benchmark. And then you target that uh, for my tomatoes or something like my cucumber. If it is something this a PPM or this quantity of a nutrient is required for a better crop growth, then that we need to uh, tweak and try to achieve by using different fertilizer in our fertilizer recipe. Okay. Once we achieve that, whatever is on the secondary platform information available and you just gather that, okay, for my tomato, this is the information I managed to get and let's try now. After that, what you need to do, you just supply or you apply those, those uh, so means fertilizer solution to your crop and observe some uh, impact. If it is very good, then it is okay. 
if there is any somehow problem then try to list down this problem maybe because of calcium maybe because of uh, magnesium maybe because of iron so all the deficiencies in terms and I, all the roles of nutrient is maybe if you uh, go on some of the videos of uh, uh, nutrient management you can get that deficiency symptom as well as all those things on my youtube channel so from there you can understand that uh, once we we just freeze those basic requirement of my crop exploring the secondary platform information then uh, we supplied that to my crop and see the impact and try to identify uh, some of the issues what what because of that particular uh, recipe is is uh, reflecting in your crop so then you have to tweak it means calibrate it as per your project okay and once you calibrate that and then you will be uh, uh, mean something like uh, ready with your uh, crop recipe or a nutrient ratio for your project and for your crop the second uh, question in that is uh, what is the ground or what is the factor which decide your uh, uh, nutrient ratios and nutrient combination see one bottom line is all the essential nutrients are required for any crop growth you need to have all major and macro uh, nutrient macro and micronutrient uh, all essential nutrient need to be present in your solution having said that if suppose he is giving an example of a tomato tomato is having a different stages one is the seedling second is the vegetative third is a fruiting or a reproductive stage and at each stage the requirement of crop is different if we talk about the seedling stage at that stage it required or something like the plant required to have a better growth of the root because root is a mouth if root development is uh, optimal your crop is going to perform good okay so you have to see from all the essential nutrient what are those nutrients responsible for root development and increase the proportion of that and one of them is may very straightforward is the phosphorus so that's a, somehow your first recipe about seedling and then the moment it trans transform from uh, seedling to a vegetative state at that time the most important thing is the vegetative growth plant is going to uh, build up their tissue and it is going to expand the chlorophyll and it is also a lot of cell division is going to happen because without cell division plant cannot grow and for bodybuilding or for uh, <clears throat> multiplication of a cell and creating the plant uh, uh, body or structure then the nitrogen is the most important thing okay so in vegetative phase we need to have high nitrogen optimal phosphorus optimum potassium calcium is responsible for your cell division so that quantity need to be higher side iron and magnesium is very crucial for a chlorophyll development so these need to be uh, on a higher side okay so even the means this the zinc zinc is also associated with the number of enzymatic activity promotion of a number of uh, enzymatic activities within the plant so all these nutrients need to be focused during the vegetative stage and even if your you, your your crop is your project is in an area where there is a risk of moisture stress then potassium comes in in, in play and even for a disease resistance also the potassium is a good uh, nutrient so vegetative phase the potassium is also an important one and now the ratios of these nutrient means if anybody is saying that yeah i can give you the mm, perfect uh, ratio so i have my reservations for every project these ratios are going to be uh, developed or uh, uh, work out or established by the grower only by doing these uh, hit and try methods or just calibration of the uh, uh, most optimal whatever the information he has gathered and now the third stage one we once the the uh, uh, plant start flowering 
then you have to see what are those nutrients help in uh, fruit development and even the photosynthate or uh, whatever the food prepared by the the leaves is need to be transported to a, a fruit so what is the nutrient responsible what is the nutrient responsible for a fertilized uh, means fruit setting means from a flower to fruit setting what are those nutrients responsible for uh, flower uh, promotions and just uh, providing a better nutrition to that crop so all these nutrients are required at the time of a flowering and fruiting and then also what are the nutrients uh, responsible for increasing the quality of uh, your your uh, output here yeah, or, or uh, fruit so that's the way we can uh, develop our most optimal fertilizer recipe and that is the bottleneck in in hydroponic industry that it it takes little more time and those who are already uh, achieved that they are not ready to share that okay so my suggestion to to mr sethi is that you have to develop your own fertilizer recipe by just understanding the different nutrients role and at what state that role is critical by that way you will be able to develop your own recipe and the most important thing is always look your crop while designing your recipe while testing any protocol always observe your crop your crop is going to tell you that whatever you are doing is right or wrong instead of asking maybe dr praveen or anybody else the best way is just observe your crop closely and your crop is going to tell you everything the moment you will start doing all those things the crop itself is going to give you a lot of leverage and the crop will tell you that okay i need this you are doing little wrong you need to modify yours so that's the bottom line for uh, mr Saint. yeah we can move for a next question and meantime if anybody is having any follow-up questions so they can raise their hand and they can ask that Yeah, Anuj. The next query is from uh, Ruchita. Hmm. She, uh, she says, my query is, do lettuce require different nutrient mix than other leafy greens for commercial purpose? If hmm. yes, what's the difference? Okay. So, uh, see, basically, if we talk about large scale commercial farm, even the different lettuce varieties also require a different nutrition okay if we really are going for a very sophisticated kind of a, a project then even romaine lettuce requirement is different than your leafy one and even iceberg required a different uh, nutrient combination and even the butterhead required a different nutrient combination and even if you look for uh, for something specific purpose of your uh, lettuce production maybe if you want to just uh, uh, build up little more crispness means crunchiness or you want to uh, work on some little different taste then also your recipe is going to be different however if you are just uh, looking for a very small kind of a project for your own purpose or serving a few customers then you can grow most of the lettuce and even some of these leafy vegetable on a same recipe but you have to balance it out like we are growing all like uh, lettuce different kind of a lettuce except the uh, iceberg all different lettuce kale rocket basil means almost all the leafy vegetable on the same recipe and we are getting a good response also so uh, you have to see and understand uh, based on your project requirement if it is a highly sophisticated commercial project then yes you need to develop a fertilizer recipe for each and every uh, crop and how is again the grower need to work on but yes the life is easy because you have to play with all those 16 18 essential nutrients not more than that yeah 
the next question is again from Rochita. Yeah. And is from the nutrient family itself. She mm -hmm. asks how to identify if there is a deficiency and can you just add that particular nutrient if it is deficient? Mm -hmm. As it is always mentioned that the equal quantity of stock solution A, B, and C needs to be given. Mm -hmm. So she is asking us that she can identify that uh, some nitrogen is missing or some calcium is missing. So my calcium, I, I should add only calcium or I should add only nitrogen or that particular element. Mm -hmm. See, uh, if, if we see, there are good number of information available on uh, internet. So if we talk about the deficiency symptom, so deficiency symptoms are very, very peculiar and uh, uh, very, very clear. If I just share my screen and I can just show you. So if we talk about this particular uh, slide, this particular photo, you can see that the plants have a different kind of a symptom for all. Like see, magnesium, Mg is having intravenal chlorosis. And then iron is also start with a Mn. If you see Mg and Mn, both are showing a, a, a intravenal chlorosis. Chlor see, a uh, little uh, before that, if we talk about the deficiencies, so in plant, Overall deficiency symptoms are only in two parts, two types, I should say. One is showing the necrosis, means necrosis means dead spot. Patti jal jati hai, sukh jati hai. Aur dusra jo deficiency symptom hota hai, patti ka peela padna ya color change hona hota hai. Thik hai? These are the deficiency symptoms. So, Ruchita's uh, case is, first, she must know that how to identify the deficiencies. Okay, so for that, if we just, I, I haven't got something uh, really a good uh, chart, though I have uh, those chart in my, uh, some of these nutrient management and crop deficiency symptom on, on the YouTube channel. So I'm just utilizing this one for a time being. So for Ruchita, the first step she need to uh, start for identifying any nutrient deficiency is that she need to see at which part of the plant that this symptom is appearing okay if it is appearing on old leaf like uh, uh, something at the bottom of your your plant then it may be npk mg and even molybdenum also okay so these are somehow this chart is not right because molybdenum it is showing on 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 top but npk mg and mo means n nitrogen phosphorus potassium NPK, Mg, Magnesium, and Mo, Molybdenum. These are the nutrients uh, which are lazy. They, their mobility inside the plant is somehow very, not lazy, very active, very fast. So the moment root absorb these nutrients, it quickly move on, on the epic of those, those uh, plant. So because of that, the deficiency never occur on the apical part of your crop. It always shows the deficiency where there is a lack of nutrient. So this symptom always appear on a lower leaf. So for uh, Richita, if she want to identify or anybody want to identify the deficiency symptom, the first step is look at which part of your, your crop that the deficiency symptom is appearing. If it is a lower part, then NPK, MG and MO. And if it is an apical part, the buds, which is a fungi, or a top leaf, which is a growth, if there is a deficiency symptom, hai, to then that is a calcium and boron. Okay? Uh, and then other nutrients shows deficiency on means middle leaf. Okay? So that's the first step as a grower you need to follow for identification of deficiency symptoms. And then uh, maybe I can use my book itself. I have that book with me right now. So I'll show you this chart. I don't know whether you, you are able to see the chart or not. So uh, what I'll do, not clear. Not clear. What I'll do, I'll just share this deficiency uh, identification chart on the group itself. It is a very simple chart. Uh, 
the deficiency symptom you will appear maybe on the low uh, old leaves maybe on a new leaves maybe on a old and new leaves and maybe on the terminal part and if we see the deficiency symptoms so dead spot no dead spot and in no dead spots there are uh, chlorosis means chlorosis pila patti ka pila padna completely pila padna ya beech mein usme aapka uh, jo veins hoti hai patti ki jo nase hoti hai usme pila pan nahi hota hai so these are the some of the sim, uh, deficiency symptom if you see even this also you can get some of the deficiency symptoms here okay so you can gather all those information maybe you can watch that video what i have put on uh, my youtube channel or you can just type a specific uh, nutrient deficiency symptom on a google you will get all those details so the first step is identifying the right deficiency symptom for uh, ruchita and uh, as well as for everybody and then you have you you can add that nutrient further so the moment you see any deficiency symptom it's mean your recipe is not the best one you need to tweak your uh, recipe so you have to just change or add that particular nutrient further and continue your recipe and keep observing and if the deficiency symptom is disappeared then yeah it's mean you are in right direction if it is still there then you have to add further okay and the second uh, uh, for a commercial project because in commercial project this is not at all acceptable if the deficiency symptom is appearing in any commercial project so it's mean the grower is not an efficient grower okay uh, however if the deficiency symptom appears then you can opt for doing foliar spray also as an emergency preventive measure for the crop loss because why i am saying for an efficient grower the deficiency symptoms should not be there because till the time the symptoms appear on the leaf uh, damage is already being done or damage is started there okay so now again for a deficiency symptom the steps identity look for where it is which part of the the plant the symptom is appearing match that with the uh, nutrient particularly uh, deficiency symptoms uh, possibility of appearing of those particular nutrient maybe on the lower middle or uh, top part and then you can just simply uh, perform the corrective measure there okay yeah so we can go for a next okay the next question is also from ruchita actually i have compiled all the three yeah uh, she asked uh, when using seeds from hybrid fruits is it true that those seeds will grow but not but will not yield fruits hmm. see hybrid seed is what we need to understand that hybrid seed is what hybrid seed is a seed which is means cross between a male and female with a specific character so maybe uh, if i just give you an example of uh, maybe chili okay so uh, the hotness means jo tikha pan hota hai mirchi ka wo character ke sath ek hybridization hua okay and then the f1 generation jo pehli generation hoti hai usse nikal ke aati hai usme wo character dominate ho ke prominent ho ke aayega that is assured okay so if you are saying that if i'll just use the seed from a hybrid crop whether it is going to give you a fruit or not so answer is yes it is going to give you the fruit but because that is going to be f2 generation f1 generation is the cross between those the optimal or those the characters which is most suitable then the moment it reaches to f2 generation then there is means no guarantee that whether it is going to be a something like a same uh, uh, a character for for that particular variety what you have opted for or it is going to be a different one that is the challenge and that's how people used to say that never use seed from the hybrid crop means the, the seed uh, harvested out of a hybrid uh, varieties 
that is the reason it is not something it is not going to fruit definitely it is going to fruit or it is going to give you the some production but yes the desired character whether it is going to reflect there in f2 generation or not is not sure but yes it is going to give you the fruit yeah the next query comes from alps alps yeah he also not joined along Mm -hmm. He says, my query related to pest control organic way. I struggle with millibugs as yellow and blue sticky trap work to control white fly. Mm -hmm. He uses mm -hmm. yellow and blue sticky trap work to control white fly. I struggle with millibugs. Mm -hmm. So this See, is the query he has posted. He uh, has. Yeah, do, so whatever. So uh, John has also advised to use neem oil and IPM. Mm. And also says in case of severe, severe infestation, use chemical ethers, no way to control. Mm -hmm. See, uh, yeah, so for, for, for anything like uh, these type of uh, insect problem and for any high tech project, it is always advisable to follow some preventive measure instead of doing the control measure. Okay, so preventive measure means you have wherever your project or wherever your unit is try to avoid developing some host plant okay if i'm saying host plant every insect every pathogen is building up or multiplying on some nearby host plant so if you efficiently manage your uh, surrounding of your project and try to eliminate any vegetation or around that that particular project then the risk or uh, chances of uh, uh, insect attack or insect infestation in your project is minimal okay uh, even means what we follow we follow spraying nutrients around my project area outside the greenhouse is more important than uh, application of these harmful chemicals inside the greenhouse. So suppose <coughs> first thing is clearing all the vegetation around in and around the project area, then regular spray of uh, insecticide and pesticide uh, around my greenhouse area. So by doing these two practices at least we are eliminating the multiplication uh, multiplication head means uh, the the place so they are not multiplying the numbers are not going to increase and if the numbers are not going to increase your crop inside the greenhouse or your crop in your commercial growing zone is safe that is the first uh, precaution second precaution what usually in india is happening most of the people they allow good number of visitors and whenever anybody is coming from anywhere and he is visiting he or she is visiting your uh, uh, project area he or she may become a carrier for these pathogens so the second precaution is try to avoid unnecessary entry of uh, any person inside the greenhouse and you know in in developed country it is strictly prohibited only the worker with the proper hygiene with having all those uh, uh, gowns and everything and just treated with all those uh, uh, sanitizers and all and then only they enter and once they enter they will come out uh, um, means after after performing their work so but in india most of the project people are excited and the people are just allow people to get in i'm not saying that you should not allow but you have to have all those precautions sanitization uh, uh, maybe having those uh, aprons and having all those kind of uh, uh, disinfectant in place so by that way you can minimize but I don't know, this millibug is really little tricky kind of a, a insect. Why so? Again, it's, it's a nature. Nature gives everybody a good, good something like a space for, uh, uh, what should I say, uh, for everybody to enjoy. 
and safety measure for that this milli box they have a very soft skin okay but simultaneously that is also giving you a lot of hairs and because of that hair on the top of the body it is really difficult for any chemical to penetrate that velvet kind of uh, uh, hairs so one do all those precaution second uh you have to do all those things by which you uh, uh, prevent the entry of any pathogen and the third is you need to be very vigilant means you have to be a means a person who can talk to your crop who can speak on on your different uh, means plants and the moment you see that any any deviation or any uh, problem or in in any of the crop then you have to immediately take some action and suppose you have a 2000 plants and only 5 are infested and it is short duration crop like any leafy crop take out throw them out don't have any sympathy with that okay so that's the way we can just something like avoid all these things and if at all it requires to control or go for a chemical uh, control of these insects which one efficient grower must avoid then in that case you have to see which is the best chemical for controlling this uh, uh, pathogen or insects or paste and try to have two three options and then you try to understand the self life of that particular agrochemical and use accordingly suppose you want to harvest in next one week and your uh, agrochemical self life is 15 days so it's mean you are means not producing a healthy crop the consumer is going to get the residue of that particular chemical so in extreme case if you want to utilize you need to identify some of these chemicals which are meant for that particular insects or paste or disease and try to study that what is the my self life of uh, these these uh, agrochemical self life is the life in which this uh, harmful impact of these agrochemical is dissipate means it, it it start disintegrating and it's a poisonous impact is means gradually vanish so after doing all these things then you identify the best one and use that as a chemical control but for efficient grower there should not be any any kind of a uh, such situation where he need to force for applying uh, uh, any insecticide because if that is the case then it's mean the grower is not attentive enough to identify that problem at a start or initiating stage and for a milli bug particularly you have to have a uh, means a sticky agent added in your chemical sticking agent is what it is uh, uh, surfactant or, uh, or these type of uh, chemicals available which uh, reduce the surface area contact of that particular solution and that if, if that is uh, added with your agrochemical then only it is going to reach or penetrate the uh, velvet hair of your uh, milli bug and then only the milli you can uh, get rid of your milli bug so if at all it required to use a chemical use chemical with any sticky agent one is a sticky agent one is a surfactant so a sticky agent is always something like covering on on uh, means uh, on a leaf but the surfactant reduces the surface area uh, means uh, surface area tension of that solution and then it will because if you see uh, if you'll put a drop of water on a velvet it will form a small something circular shape but if you'll add a surfactant then it will easily break and it will penetrate that one and then only you can kill your uh, uh, millibug otherwise it is really tough uh, uh, insect despite having a very very uh, fragile kind of a skin yeah 
Anuj, go for a next question. The next question is from the same user. Yeah. He asked, uh, can I grow Pudina and Dhania in NFT or grow back in indoor MP where temperature rises above 40 degrees Celsius? See, uh, yes, this uh, Pudina and uh, Dhania, both are leafy and they are something like uh, relatively easy to grow. But if I give you a better option, uh, it's always better to grow these two crop in soilless. Though the mint, Pudina, it, it's really doing fantastic in uh, NFT also. But in, in, in summer, it may create a problem. But for the summer duration, uh, coriander as well as uh, this mint, both should go in soilless hydroponics. With same recipe also, these uh, these two crops can be grown. But yes, if it is a commercial, then yeah, uh, the ultimate thing is the fragrance. Means, so you have to study that what is the nutrient is specifically helping in building this uh, uh, kind of a fragrance. Maybe the sulfur, maybe the something like some other nutrient. And then you have to tweak. If you are going for a large scale, means something like two, three, four acres, then in that case, you need to have a separate recipe for a mint and separate recipe for a coriander. But if you are going for a small projects of a, maybe a quarter of an acre or a 200 meter square area or something, then you can grow in a same, same, uh, on same recipe. Yeah. Next is again from Ruchita. No, yeah. no, no, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, she was coming again. The next question is from Anshu. Yeah. Uh, if one wants to enter into commercial farming, what are the ways to know which crop to grow for the most benefits as per the demand and how to understand the sales ch channel for the grown crop? Yeah. Uh, Anshu, uh, is for, for your question, you are the only person or investor is the only person who should find out the answer for this. I will suggest uh, uh, the investor or those who ever is willing to go for a new project or a commercial venture of a company, never rely on anybody because ultimately it is your hard earned money you are going to put in that project. So that thing, uh, uh, investor need to uh, decide by themselves. Now the question comes how? If we talk about everybody knows the, the uh, system of this uh, vegetable marketing, it's a B2B and B2C. B2B, it's a hotel and retailers. Okay. So if you interact with these two guys, I means something even the Mondays, if you can interact with the, some of the representative in these three areas, you will have, get a fair idea that what is the crop, which is uh, all the demand. What is something like uh, uh, required kind of means uh, revenue or return we can earn on this? So that is one question need to be answered. Second question need to be answered that what is something kind of a, a, a availability of these, these kind of a vegetables? So based on the availability, always the uh, price is higher or lower. So suppose the supply is less, demand is high. So always that is going to be a uh, I means. Uh, the premium you are, you can realize is always high. So one is what is the crop which is uh, in demand. Second is what is that cycle when we should target to produce. Okay, and based on these two things, you can decide your infrastructure. So means you have to come up with a, a logic or with a something equation okay i decided i'll go for these three four five crops which is in well in demand around the year in my mark targeted market and now uh, this crop is going to give me if i just supply around the year these three months i'm going to get an average these three months i'm going to get a something like a very low price and these these few months where i can realize the highest premium now your decision of something like uh, setting up a project is depends on okay whether i want to go for this complete round the year voila solution for for the customers so in that case your your structure need to be as per that the infrastructure and if you want okay uh, three months it's a good uh, uh, 
price we are getting but if i just extend it for a six month i can just get a something uh, increase 20 30 percent on my average margin without in investing on my operational cost because we need to be very clear that operational cost need to be considered while deciding uh, the round the year production maybe those two three tough months the price you are realizing is significantly higher but your operating cost is also going to go higher for for say for example you you want to produce this lettuce or specifically if i talk about the the iceberg lettuce during summer you will realize a good price in the market but you have to have means invest a good amount of money for bringing down the temperature uh, ensuring the humidity all these factors you need to control so if the margin is significantly higher than uh, the additional operational cost then yes if the project is feasible but if it is something like not that significant it is always better target to extend the growing season not means target absolutely off season and that is the way you can decide on your crop okay and the second thing also what uh, uh, investor should consider uh, you need to see that what are the crops and what are the microclimate required and based on that you have to ask your supplier or a vendor that see i want to create this microclimate for growing my crop and I need the infrastructure for that. And if he is just submitting a proposal, you should be able to ask many whys. Why this, why not that? Why this, why not that? And then only you can uh, uh, ensure efficient return on your investment. Hope I, I, I managed to uh, satisfy. Ansu is here. So Ansu, uh, have you got your uh, reply? Yeah, hi, Dr. Praveen. Yes, uh, I really got a fair idea about it. And let me start with your, uh, you know, the way you have told me. That's great. That's great. Yeah, Anuj, we should move for our next question now. Yeah, the next query comes from Amit. He, uh, I suppose uh, he's also here. Uh, he says, if I want to go for commercial hydroponics for hobs in hot and dry climate, what should be the smart choice? And as per the demand of the market. This location is Aurangabad, Maharashtra. Hot and humid. Yeah, hot and dry. Hot and dry. Okay, yes. little little easy. Hot and dry. The easiest, you know, the easiest uh, for our uh, any any protected cultivation is <coughs> the cold weather. Okay, thand me grow karna protected me sabse asan hota hai. Or sabse tough hota hai grow karna. Uh, in, in an environment which is which is hot and humid both okay but in your case it is a hot and dry so the first step for you to identify your crop that okay these are the few crops which is uh, going to fetch me a good return from the market and it is easy to market or sell after doing that you need to assess the requirement microclimate requirement especially the temperature and humidity uh, for that growing period okay and if it is something like of fitting in your uh, hot and dry climate uh, the crop is just preferring that then your life is easier but if it is something like yeah looking for a decent temperature not hot not cold and uh, with with uh, maybe a decent humidity then you need to start work so there is two things one is for your your uh, climate one is heat managing heat and the second is managing humidity so first thing you can uh, uh, do by putting your infrastructure right infrastructure for heat so we need to understand by uh, how this this generation of a heat how this heat is 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 somehow increasing or decreasing what is the source of this heat so the source of heat is the sunlight 
because sunlight is a bundle of a photon and bundle of energy and whenever it it absorbed by any surface be a a, a poly sheet be a, a iron rod be a soil be a, any any plant surface so the moment that that light absorbs the it like the light energy converts into heat and most of the heat in your greenhouse is generated when your sunlight penetrate your your poly sheet and reaches to soil and converts into a heat okay so what is the option very simple option bhai aap apne aap ko bhi dekho agar ped ki chha mein khade ho versus aap uh, direct sunlight mein khade ho so uh, means definitely you will feel a much more heat in open sunlight as compared to shade So the same philosophy you have to uh, include in your uh, greenhouse. So maybe your shade net should be such that it prevents the entry of light, and ultimately uh, it is going to help you minimizing or reducing the temperature in greenhouse. So you need to have a shade net with as much as shade that net. provide the shade so maybe 90% maybe even even go for 100% also if you have a retraction means the opening and closing option okay so during peak sunlight you some shade your crop completely so maybe you you can just from the top you can black it out from, from side the light will come but from the top there should not be any uh, light in okay that's the one thing second for a dry climate you need to trap your uh, humidity inside and for creating a humidity there is two option one is your floor another is your your uh, fogger so the fogger need to be operated in such a way that it should create increase the humidity and decrease the temperature and if you you also operate a recirculating fan within that uh, structure that is going to further improve your uh, cooling effect okay but the bottom line the principle is whenever you are operating your fogging system the droplet must not reach up to the plant leaf it should be such tiny pressure itna hona chahiye itni choti honi chahiye ki upar se niche tak aane mein itna heat absorb kar le ki that convert into a vapor and vapor ban ke wo fir wo upar se nikal jaye so that is a one way and second way wetting your floor so maybe you can have some of the misters on the ground on the floor they just something emit a very fine particles of uh, water so this is a mister that's how it's it's mist creates and is known as a misters so on the floor you can create a misters and the moment your floor become a, a wet it will means further absorb the heat and convert that water into a vapor and which will in further improve your humidity so that's the way you can man manage your crop in hot and dry weather okay but yes the air circulation is really really crucial for the areas where uh, the dry and hot is weather is there or uh, hot and humid even hot and humid weather may climate may air circulation within your growing zone or your your greenhouse is means the most important factor for ensuring the crop health okay yeah the next question comes from shivangi yeah i think amit is there if he has to ask something he can amit uh, yeah uh, sir this side amit actually sir the environment is you know it will be hot and humid in coming two months it will be near about 36 37 degree and humidity will be around 70 to 80% how can i control both yeah so then in that case i have given you that hot and dry okay now now only only submission for you only uh, further information you required on hot and humid see yes sir uh hot and humid if the humidity is high in the atmosphere say for example it is 80 90% humidity outside or in environment uh there is no way except putting dehumidifier there is no way to bring down the humidity in your uh, greenhouse because the outside humidity itself is a 80 or a 90% then you cannot bring down 
okay so only option is which is really costly dehumidifier so you put dehumidifier in your greenhouse then to bring down but you have to understand you have to assess whether how economical this is okay that's a uh, means a straightforward uh, uh, solution however if i just something like uh, I want to efficiently manage that humidity whatever is there 80% 85% or 90% so what is happening suppose 80% or 85% humidity is in your environment outside and inside is maybe a little higher also so your as a grower your effort should be what is happening if suppose this is the leaf lamina means something like this is the leaf lamina most uh, uh, means 90% of stomata the opening of leaf is on the lower side okay and they transpire the moisture the excess water to cool down their body body temperature plant release this kind of uh, the water the moisture from stomata which is known as transpirate okay so what is happening is suppose the the average humidity in your greenhouse is 85 the moment this leaf will start releasing more water the humidity around this leaf is going to increase and it may be 95% and 90% 95% humidity around the leaf will further block the release of transpiration from the leaf which is negatively going to impact your absorption nutrient absorption and the plant is going to start so you don't have any option if you are putting your uh, uh, this dehumidifier it is going to cost you don't have any option bringing down to, uh, below 85 so what is what should be your effort your effort should be to maintain 85 percent whatever the normal humidity in atmosphere <laughs> around the leaf also and that can be done by suppose here the humidity uh, shoot up because the transpiration so if you put up air means circulate the air the 85 percent air will come and it will just circulate everything so ultimately your effort should be ensuring that around the leaf always it is 85 percent and then that is only possible if you have an efficient air circulation in in your your greenhouse and specifically at the height of your vegetative growth okay yes sir. so, so uh, circulating fan will help me to control that what will the circulating fan help me to you know circulate uh, the uh, humidity yeah to the greenhouse See, this is something like you are ensuring that the 85% humidity across the leaf area means something wherever the plant is there or wherever there is no plant. So you are just circulating because what is happening, 85% humidity is a normal humidity of your atmosphere, is your air. So whatever the air is something like near to crop canopy that is building up because the transpiration is happening, but on the top it is 85 only. So what is going to happen, this 90% is going to be absorbed in that 85% because the volume of air is, volume is really good in your greenhouse. That's how you can manage your uh, humidity. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Anuj. Can we go to next question? Yeah, the last query remaining for the evening. Yeah. Comes from Shivangi. Yeah. Uh, what TDS should be maintained in a strawberry a fruiting level? Mm. Uh see, one thing is very clear that I generally never prefer these uh, TDS because TDS is not at all for uh, your hydroponic growing. TDS is always to assess the quality of drinking water. And what is this? The TDS is total dissolved solid. And that is the something like a measure uh, invented by the scientists to assess the quality of water and how they were doing. They have been doing means like uh, uh, taking a uh, volume of water and boiling it and evaporating till the complete moisture or complete water evaporates and only some solid left over so that's how they assess that solid and they can give you the uh, idea about the water quality 
which is really a tedious effort for for uh, judging the water quality so later on the people uh, tried and invented this electrical conductivity concept because it's more or less same and that is being something like uh, used for assessing there was a link between ec and tds so they can just measure the ec and convert into a tds so the major difference between T and uh, TDS is it is all solid and EC is only something like taking the ionic concentration, uh, ionic uh, salt concentration in your solution. So TDS is EC plus anionic uh, salts also. But EC is going, going to give you exact though the, the proportion, the something like uh, proportion of that particular uh, solid which is anionic is very limited. But why to go for a tedious always follow the ec okay and uh, i don't know maybe c is the only who shared uh, some picture on one of my whatsapp or uh, a group only that uh, it is in, in vertical towers he's growing some uh, strawberry i think that is that is the question there yeah yeah exactly yeah so uh for that first we need to the the we need to be a something like a, following a right step for growing any crop. What is that for right step? First thing is identify your crop. Okay, the moment you identify, like you identified your crop as a strawberry. So you have to see what is the best growing system in hydroponic this, this uh, strawberry. Yes, strawberry can do really good in, in uh, this kind of uh, NFT system in cooler areas but again if you will grow that strawberry in an ft in something like areas where the temperature is of both extreme high and low then the the problem starts so in your case the growing system is not right first thing okay so it is it's your question of tedious and all it is not because of tedious it is because of lack of oxygen in your growing system so to ensure a better aeration and better uh, kind of uh, something kind of uh, uh, a required microclimate in hot regions like uh, uh, india and tropical and subtropical areas like india and uh, all those areas where the hot weather is there the strawberry is good to grow in soilless hydroponics once you rightly choose your growing system then it comes that what should be the ec so ec again uh, you have to decide based on the stage because strawberry is again something like a fruiting crop so initial stage it required something like a, a, for a vegetative growth then it's a fruiting stage then you have to uh, do a fruiting kind of a, a recipe so recipe is based on the nutrient role you can design your own recipe so means about what you ask the question what should be the tedious i'm taking it what should be the ec so ec is specifically for every project is different but anything between 0.8 to even 2 is the right ec for your uh, strawberry because point maybe something like 0 0.6 0 0.8 0 0.9 is good for your vegetative growth but however what i'm saying you have to set your own recipe develop your recipe test it and then you freeze it okay and strawberry is one one very very crucial thing is the junction the place from where the knot the root and leaf is there you have to have ensured whenever you are planting this knot should not go below the soil okay so these are the some precautions you need to uh, take for hydroponics uh, strawberry growing so for you the first you change your uh, growing system and then you design your recipe yeah so anuch we we, we just something uh, done with all the queries yeah i okay. suppose that's good so uh anyone have maybe we can just uh take another few queries for 10 10 15 minutes 
minutes. So, uh, yeah, if anybody have a specific question, they can ask. Otherwise, we can just uh, conclude this session. That's good. It looks like, yeah, everybody is uh, satisfied and uh, no more queries. So, yes, we will uh, close this session here. Thank you very much for those who just participated in this initiative. And especially thank you to Anuj who has uh, uh, took this initiative for compiling the queries and just uh, uh, organizing this uh, kind of a session. And I would love to be in something taking these type of a sessions in future also. The only thing is the bottom line you should means capable enough to deciding that how your project should behave and how to ensure a success of any hydroponic initiative. So I'm always there for support, for your support. Anybody who want to have a query, maybe uh, we can organize such events in, in a regular interval or they can just post their query. Yeah, then thank you very much to all of you who are here. Uh, Good evening, best. sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, you're in the this side, sir. Yeah, you're Sorry, right. I seen the message and I'm not able to join the call on time. Yeah, so, no. just want to give my feedback about my plant. So yeah. Now the tomato is working nice and uh, cucumber also. Both are almost four to five feet height. That's good. That's good. Good to hear. So, uh, are nice and even. Cucumber, same application, sir. Hello. Yeah. Hello? Uh, there is some issue uh, in so connectivity. Yeah. Tell me. Okay. So, so I'm asking my cucumber are, are on fruiting uh, fruiting stage right now. Mm -hmm. So do I need to continue the same uh, fertigation because they are working fine with that? See, uh, only thing if it is for working fine, but you increase the two, two nutrient, little modification, you increase the potassium, you increase the boron content and see the impact okay. because uh, if, if uh, uh, you should not wait for, for uh, just something like showing the symptom because now your recipe is doing for vegetative growth and your crop is entering from vegetative to reproductive stage, then you have to modify, increase some of the nutrient which is required for flowering and fruiting. Okay. Okay. So yeah. potas potassium and boron need to increase a little bit. Yes. And you may, if your, your crop is doing fairly good on this, uh, the targeted EC. So maybe you can freeze that targeted EC, only change the ratios of that nutrient. Okay. Yeah. No issue, sir. I will revise my uh, fertigation chart and then share to you. Sure. Sure. I'll give my comment. Uh Hi. Sure. Hi, Dr. Praveen. Uh, I have uh, asked one question to you directly also. Yeah. Uh, I would like to ask the same on this platform also that, you know, while working on your fertilizer sheet, we understood NPK, uh, you know, the target which we need to achieve. How am we are unable to understand the micronutrient ratio and quantity as in there is no target as in mentioned in the Excel? So how one need to decide that what quantity to be added? Yeah. See, Anshu, uh, that is really, really a I means regular question I have just uh, encountering. So uh, there is nothing like a standard for uh, for uh, what should be that something like uh, this ratios of a, a micronutrient. Uh, see, if you talk about out of these sixteen elements primary or a major nutrient NPK, it constitute more than 80-90%. Okay, so the quantity of uh, micronutrient is, is very, very minimal as compared to this NPK. That's how we are focusing on NPK ratio, even not we are focusing on a secondary nutrient ratio. <clears throat> so once you just freeze that NPK, start with a very little, uh, quantity of micronutrient and try to just something increase gradually and freeze that. And if you are asking specifically, there is any standard. So again, my question answer is going to be the same. There is no such standard for any hydroponic project. 
you can get all those detail in bits and pieces that okay suppose you are growing a strawberry so what is something by micronutrient but most crucial micronutrient for that particular crop so that a micronutrient you can just increase a little bit and then you just something like others need to be <clears throat> on a lower side but only caution whenever i just uh, guide anybody the copper copper quantity should not be higher you have to see the the toxic impact also some of the nutrient they they show the toxic impact so apart from that very minute quantity of micronutrient is required but it is equally important in ensuring your your uh, productivity if suppose your micronutrient one of the micronutrient is is lacking then the uh, most optimal dose of npk will also not yield you the best productivity so there is no uh, such a standard or a guideline available as a grower you have to decide at least you can get a basic information interacting with me or using my my uh, excel sheet the minimal level you you already got the base fair idea so based on that you can just tweak as per your crop response and that's how i used to uh, tell everybody whoever is learner go for individual nutrient and assess the impact of suppose you want to assess the impact of a boron you increase the boron and see the impact so that's the way you over a period over time you will become an expert like uh, over a period means something past 10 12 years i've been doing all these things so i got a fair idea okay ansu yeah make sense. thank you yeah welcome yes darmin सर आपने आंसर तो दे ही दिया लेकिन उसमें जो मिली बग का क्वेश्चन था उसमें थोड़ा ऐड कर दूं तो क्योंकि आईपीएम से आपका मिली बग कंट्रोल होगा लेकिन तभी होगा जब आप उसमें सिलिकॉन बेस्ड फेडर कम पेनिट्रेटर कम एडजुवेंट यूज कर रहे हैं और हमारे नॉर्मल प्रैक्टिस में भी आप उसको से हो गया तो आपको और ज्यादा लॉन्ग टर्म के लिए करना है तो वही चीज आपको रूस में भी देनी है क्योंकि उसके एड नीचे रहते हैं तो ऊपर का मर जाएगा तो नीचे से एक्स डेवलप होकर ऊपर आएगा लेकिन नीचे भी एक प्रिंटिंग जैसा करेंगे तो लॉन्ग टर्म फीचर या very 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 good uh, advice so this is for for a plant protection and even uh, uh, you have to understand the way these insects uh, damage your crop based on that also there is systematic pesticide there is a contact pesticide all those things like uh, uh, for a milli bug uh, if you are not able to control that by by using this uh, contact pesticide means contact pesticide means it is going to come in contact of insect and then it is going to kill systemic insecticide is those insecticide which is going to uh, absorb by the plant and the moment these insects are going to eat your plant they will die so that is also a really good uh, input there mean yeah so i think that's all for the today i i am i'm sure that uh, we managed to satisfy your your queries so yeah uh, the moment we'll have a more queries we can again organize this type of event for for everybody's benefit so thank you very much thank you very much for uh, listening to me and uh, sharing your uh, queries i'll be always available for satisfying any of the queries and always be with you for ensuring success thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you everyone thank you thank you good night good night bye bye